Today we're talking about Pro Tools Heat. And if you want to know what heat is, how to use it, and what it can do for your music, then stick around after this introduction. Welcome everybody, I'm Dan Spencer, and I am the Audio Sorcerer. So this is the channel where I teach you how to perfect your audio recording, mixing, and mastering skills. So before we get to the video, make sure you guys smash the like button, please subscribe and hit that notification bell to know when we have new videos coming out. So without further ado, today we're talking about Pro Tools Heat. So the question is, what is heat? Well, heat is actually built into Pro Tools and it comes with all of the subscription version of Pro Tools. Now, if you bought a outright version of Pro Tools, you may not have it, but you can actually add it for $199 and that is a one-time fee and that is the page that I have up here. Now, what does it actually do? Well, it pretty much has just one goal and that is to add analog emulation to Pro Tools. And it does it in a console style way and it adds it to every track. And as you know, on analog consoles, we are looking to have the you know channels work together to get that overall coloration. And you know, we don't have individual controls on each channel when it comes to how they work regarding, you know, like distortion and saturation. All right. And that's the same way heat works. You turn on heat, you have a master control, and that's it. You could not modify this on the individual channels. Now you can turn it on and off if you don't want it on a particular channel, but that's it, okay? This works as a whole. So you're treating your mix as a whole with heat, and that's what's really cool about it, okay? So in this video, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to actually enable heat because that seems to be an issue for some people to find out how to actually enable it. I'm gonna show you how you actually use it. And then we're gonna listen to the two different types of distortion in it. We're gonna to listen to them, of course, in this mix I have bypassed and then brought in. And then we're also gonna to listen to them against each other so you can hear what they sound like. And then after that, you should know whether you want to end up using heat in your mixes or not. And if you guys enjoy Pro Tools, I do have a training playlist popping up the top right corner now. So definitely check that out after this video because it is full of great videos to help you guys learn more about this amazing DAW. And with that being said, let's get further into this topic and I will show you how to enable heat within Pro Tools. All right, so here we are in Pro Tools. And the first thing that I wanna mention is that if you end up liking heat and you want to have it active in all of your sessions going forward, you can actually enable it by default. And to do that, if you go up to the Setup tab here, you click that, go down to Preferences, and then you go over to the Processing tab here, you're gonna see DSP Management, and then you can do Enable Heat in New Sessions. So if you check that and you hit OK, that's going to have it enabled in all of your sessions going forward, okay? Now, if you have a session here where you don't have Heat enabled, you're gonna to wanna to go to your Options tab here, and then you're gonna to want to go down to activate heat. And you're gonna see that it's doing its thing here. Now, you didn't see anything change, and that's likely because you don't actually have heat showing in your console view here. So if we go up to our views tab here, and then we go to the mix window views, and then we click on heat, you're now gonna see we have heat at the top up here. And there's also a couple other places that you can go to show heat. Uh, if you go down to your bottom left-hand corner here, there's a little arrow here, and this gives you access to other views inside of the mix window. So you can enable them here. Now, we still can't see the actual master view, and the master view is kind of in a weird location. If we go to the bottom right corner of the mix window, you're gonna see this little icon over here. Now, if you click on it, it doesn't really do anything. You gotta kind of like click and almost like drag to the left. And there, I got it to open up here. It's almost like a panel. And this is the master control for heat right here. And it is strictly two knobs. And this is how you activate heat. And this is how you get to all of your controls for heat. 
So next, we're gonna talk about how you actually use this master panel here and what these knobs do. All right, so there are only two controls, as mentioned, for the master controls of heat, but it is important to know what these controls do to get the most out of this plugin. So the drive control here is the bread and butter of heat. If you turn this to the left, that is gonna get you your tape distortion, which is your odd harmonics. If you turn it to the right, that is gonna get you your tube distortion, which is your even harmonics. And then you have a tone knob beneath that, which is essentially a tilt EQ. So if you turn it to the right, it's gonna brighten up the sound a bit. If you turn it to the left, it's gonna dull the sound a bit. And then above all that, you have the bypass, which this will bypass heat on all of the channels, but not actually disable the heat plugin. If you turn off the power here, this will actually disable heat inside of Pro Tools. Okay, so that is everything on the master controls of heat. Now, on the channels here, you have an option to bypass it per channel and then either set it pre or post fader. My preference is to use this pre fader so that my, you know, sounds are going through heat first, then my plugins and then, you know, down my chain. Uh, you can use it however you want. I'm not going to say there's a best practice. That's up to you. But, you know, if I'm running this through some tape distortion, and if it's, you know, emulating like a tape machine, it would be coming from the tape machine into a console. So that's kind of the way I look at it. So that's how I like to use it. Um, there's one last thing to mention. Heat can only be applied to audio tracks. It cannot be used on instrument tracks, aux tracks, your master fader, etc. So if you have a bunch of instrument tracks, uh, you're going to want to commit those down to audio tracks, and then you can apply heat to them. All right. So with all that being said, let's actually listen to what he can do. Uh, we're going to start with it in the tape distortion mode here. And essentially, we're going to use these settings here. Uh, these are the best for this particular song here. So we're going to use it pretty much like halfway to the full tape side here, and then we'll do the same for the tube side. And then for this tone setting here, I have it a little bit on the brighter side because I thought the mix can be a little bit brighter. So I thought that was the best for this here. So we'll start with the tape. Uh, we'll start with the bypass, then we'll bring it in. Then we'll go to the tube bypassed, and then we'll bring it in. And then we're gonna go back and forth between the tape and tube, okay? So that's going to be our little listen experiment. So with that being said, let's give it a listen.
All right, so that is everything about Pro Tools Heat, and now you know what it sounds like, and I'd love to know from you guys what you think of this plugin overall. I'd love to know what you think about the tape distortion as opposed to the tube distortion. And do you think that this plugin could potentially replace the analog emulation that you're currently using in Pro Tools? So for example, if you are using the Slate Virtual Tape Machine, do you think that this could be a replacement for that or do you think it even compares? Uh, these are things that I'd like to know. So if you could leave me a message in the comment section below and let me know. So otherwise, uh, if you guys end up liking this video, give it a thumbs up. Uh, please subscribe so I'm making this content for you and hit that notification bell to know I have new videos coming out. And if you guys enjoyed this video, check out one of my favorite Pro Tools videos that I've ever made, my video on elastic audio. And with that being said, until the next video, I will see you guys later and peace out.